five years after people, the roads of the world are disappearing beneath a green map that spreads like some relentless monster. The advance of nature knows no boundaries. The gates of London's Buckingham Palace are easily breached by vines and moss. In Moscow, Red Square is becoming very green. In reality, nature will reclaim the earth very quickly. These stairs were cleared 18 months ago. If we came back in another 18 months, we'd have a hard time finding them. If we came back in five years, it would be almost impossible to find. Man's mastery over nature has always been just an illusion. When the Cambodian city of Angkor and its temple complexes were abandoned in the 15th century, jungle trees grew indiscriminately over its stone structures, entangling them in their roots. Now, without armies of gardeners and repairmen, modern cities are laid bare to nature's revenge. In New York's Central Park, the great lawns, now untended, sprout with saplings. Five years without humans leaves the park looking more like a forest. Central Park will go bananas. All of a sudden, you'll get trees, you'll get growth. All the animals and plants that are there now will go up in population levels, and they'll start to spread out into the city. The story is the same in Washington, D.C. The great monuments have been swallowed by greenery. And on what used to be the National Mall, the sounds of the jungle are echoing. Zoo animals are really the great unknown, depending on whether or not they could escape from their confinement, then things change dramatically because you might have lions, you might have tigers, both of which would be perfectly capable of surviving in a post-human period. They'd do better further south than they would do in Washington, D.C., but these are animals that are perfectly capable of figuring out how to do it and how to survive. Zoo animals may be the great unknown, but there are things we can know for sure about life 20 years after people are gone. Because there's one spot on the globe where it's already happened. It's 20 years into a life after people. Without humans to apply fresh paint and fill in cracks, even concrete buildings have already begun to crumble. Lack of maintenance turns cities into eerie ghost towns. Animals that had long avoided human population centers now return to make new homes among the decaying walls. How do we know this? Because there's one place in the world where it's already happened. We're standing in the central square of Pripyat, Ukraine, a city that was once the most modern city in the former Soviet Union. For 20 years now, this city has been sitting abandoned, and it really gives you a picture of what would happen if people are removed from a place of normal civilization. Evacuated after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, Pripyat went from a city of 50,000 to a ghost town overnight. Mm -hmm. 
dust-covered schoolrooms remain as students left them just over 20 years ago. Vegetation pries apart masonry as it crawls over buildings. An amusement park, scheduled to open four days after the date of the accident, remains never used. The park's Ferris wheel accumulates rust rather than riders. bumper car sit in a state of motionless decay. Pripyat has provided an amazing and rare opportunity to see what happens to a man-made city when humans disappear. I can see from my Geiger counter that it's really quite safe to be here. Radiation levels are not very high. But you can see that we've really hit a point of no return in recapturing these facilities. We're in what was the cultural center of the city of Pripyat. And indeed, this was a place where friends gathered, where there would be celebrations, there would be balls, there would be music, there would be dancing, there would be performing on the stage here behind me. But after 20 years, the forces of nature have started to decay this facility. This concrete Soviet facade may look imposing, but it's no match for the frigid Ukrainian winters. As the temperature drops below freezing, water that has accumulated in cracks expands, exerting bursting pressure that pulls apart the masonry. As vegetation grows unchecked, the roots spread through foundations and stairs. These roots suck in moisture that makes them expand and grow. Like miniature hydraulic jacks, over time they slowly push apart the concrete. This is only 20 years. Can you imagine what this facility will look like after 200 years? After the accident, scientists expected the worst for the wildlife in the region. Most of the trees in a one and a half square mile area around the nuclear plant were killed off by radiation. Many animals died. But incredibly, the effect of the absence of humans for 20 years has outweighed the initial damage caused by the nuclear nightmare. This is the Red Forest, an area that was horribly impacted by, uh, by radioactivity due to the Chernobyl explosion. And the trees that you see around me were, were killed by the radioactivity. The original amounts of radioactivity were sufficient to kill all of the wildlife in the region as well. But now we see a resurgence of the wildlife. As an example of how wildlife has prospered here, uh, uh, we see here we have a, an antler from a red deer, and obviously a fairly large and healthy red deer. Red deer are hardly found in any other areas in this region. And the Chernobyl zone is the only place that you'll find uh, uh, populations of red deer. We also find Russian wild boar that the populations in the zone are 10 to 15 times higher than they are outside of the zone. You're now at the kindergarten of Karpachi village, not far from the Chernobyl station. Children were living here while their parents worked. But after that night in April 